Good people of YouTube, my name is Spanner, welcome back to another episode of Conquests of the Longbow. Okay, we need to answer some riddles. Um, the thing about this riddle is, um, I don't think you can solve it without using the manual. I don't think there's any way to uh, get this information in-game. Uh, the same with Conquest of Camelot. There were, there were a, couple, a couple of riddles, like the, um, the one with the flowers that you had uh, to look at the manual, the information in the manual, like uh, this one. Let's see, stones, stones, gemstones. So we have the agate, the power of divine attraction, pull objects towards the sky, cures lunacy, cures melancholia, brings good crops, protects sailors at sea. So you have the nine gemstones here. It, it actually show, shows them in game. The druid trees over there. Sh shows them in game and their uh, respective place so you can look. So let's take a look at the riddle. I am old and my hearing fails me. I am ill and wonder when death will come for me. My mouth is, is dry. What would you give me? So hold on. Ah, here it is. Okay, let me write this down so I can, uh, so I don't need to be constantly alt tabbing. Okay, old and hearing fails. So uh, we need to to select three gems. Is that it? Old and hearing fails. Ill. And wonder when death will come for me. Death will come. And mouth is dry. Okay, what would we give him? Okay, agate. Divine attraction. Pulls objects towards the sky. Cures lunacy. Melancholia. Brings good crops. Protects sailors at sea. No. Turqu turquoise. Brings good luck. Warns of danger. Keeps horses from becoming lame. Protects from injuries by falling. No. Sapphire. Cures boils. Preserves chastity. Preserves secrets. Cures diseases of the eye. It is the stone of destiny. No. Carnelian. It suppresses blood flowing from wounds. Grants a heart's desires. Cures bleeding gums. Guides the dead to rebirth. Could this be the part, I am ill, I wonder when death will come for me? Maybe. Let's keep that in mind. Lapis Lazuli, power of the water, cures diseases of the eye. Didn't I read? Sapphire also cures diseases of the eye. It is the stone of truth, it is a fallen piece of the heavens. No. Amber. Cures fever, cures blindness, and deafness. Okay, hearing is failing. I'm old and my hearing fails, so amber. Counteracts poison, it can make a woman confess her skins. Jet, it controls demons and has the power in the underworld where the dead walk. It averts the evil eye, it cures snake bite, it prevents poisoning. Okay, so no. Opal. It forecasts death in one who is ill. Okay, so opal instead of the car uh, carnelian. It makes the wearer invisible. It unites all colors. And finally, quartz. It is petrified ice, frozen so hard it will not thaw. It draws down fire from the heavens. It quenches thirst when held in the mouth. My mouth is dry. Okay, so quartz. Amber, opal and quartz. I wonder if we need to give them... to uh, choose them in order. I'll do it anyway. So, amber is number 6. 
Let me make this like a tiny diagram here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so amber is six, opal is eight, and quartz is nine. So amber is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Your first choice is correct, brother. Choose you now two more. Opal is number eight. Aye, the check second stone is correct. Choose your last stone for this riddle. And finally, quartz, number nine. Good, here is the second riddle. I must go into battle, where I may well be wounded. Then I will know great thirst, and my eyes will burn. Okay, so battle. Where may be wounded. So probably curing a wound. Great thirst, it's probably quartz again. And eyes will burn. Okay, let me save here again. Okay, so battle where I may be wounded. So what cures wounds? Once danger protects from injuries by falling. Uh, sapphire cures diseases of the eye, so eyes will burn. Could be sapphire. But lapis lazuli would also work. Amber cures blindness. Eyes will burn. I won't qualify it as blindness. So. 3 or 5, Sapphire or Lapis Lazuli for the third part. Suppresses blood flowing from wounds. So Carnelian for the first one, number 4. And Great Thirsts, probably Quartz again, number 9. Let's try this out. So 4. Your first choice is correct. Ni uh, 9. It is correct. Let's go in number three. Well done, brother. Here is the final riddle. Sadness weighs upon my soul. Okay, so sadness, soul. My heart aches to be filled. Okay, heart aches. Would that I could steal into my love's chamber unseen. Unseen. That's the keyword here. I remember a stone that would make you invisible. Okay, so invisible makes the wearer invisible. Opal, number eight. My heart aches. Could it be melancholia? Uh, let's see, sadness of the soul, lunacy, good crops, no, sadness, sadness of the soul would be melancholia. Let's check them all, boss, prevent, preserve, preserve secrets, stone of destiny, it grants a heart's desires. Could it be the part for the heart aches, the carnelian, number four? Fallen Peace of the Heavens, Contracts Poison, no. Petrified Ice, Draws on Fire. Okay, so Sadness of the Coal might be the Agate. It cures Melancholia. Uh, heart Aches. Could be number four, Carnelian, it grants a heart's desires. Okay, so let's try this. 
Sadness of the Soul, number one. It is correct. Heart Aches, number four. It is correct. And finally, the Opal. Unseen. Welcome in, brother. Yeah, there's absolutely no way we could have solved this without having a gem guide. The prior and other monks are in this refectory. Hello. I don't recognize you. Who are you? I'm a uh, brother Eustace. And what do you do here, brother Eustace? I've joined your order so that I so that I may serve Prince John as he, as he deserves. Then you're welcome, brother Eustace, if you can fight. There's not a one of us that was the soldier before we donned the black robes. There are those with good cause to fear the skill of my arm, your, your worship, or I would not be wearing this robe. Good. We'll have to put it to the test soon. Have you sworn to obey the vows of our order? Oh, I've made many a solemn oath. Never fear. Have a care, brother Eustace. Your tongue is a mite slippery for a man who has sworn humility and obedience. Please pardon me, your worship. Very well, but we are strict here. Any infraction is punished with lashings, remember that. Can I speak with these two? What is this statue? The Normans who built this fortress must have left behind this effigy of a Norman knight. Can I touch it? No. Silence is better than talk, brother. Both of them. Okay. I guess I'm not doing anything here. The prior is no longer here in the refectory. No, I want to check this. Nothing. Can I inspect the rooms? The tower? The door to this tower is locked. I have a hunch the prior lives here. What about here? The prior is within, surrounded by torture devices, with his unfortunate victim strung up on one of them. Answer me! Speak! Or I'll put ways on your feet and reap your arms from their sockets. Hum. Eh, I tell you, Brother Eustace, I've never seen a more stubborn, stupid creature than this miserable dwarf. Aye, he does look miserable. I've wasted enough time here. Fear to stand guard and increase his pain in any way you can. When he's ready to talk, send for me. I'll be in the scribe's room. Can I speak with the rats? Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, the rats do speak. A bucket of water for reviving tortured prisoners. By the Blessed Lady, what terrible pain he must be suffering. The dwarf is in too much agony to speak. Oh, can I cure him with this? Of what use is that to a man hanging from a strapado? Can I lower him? Beyond my reach. Oh, I can use this here. Yo, you set me free, but but the prior bade you. Shrivel his black soul, I am no servant of his. Such kindness makes you a giant among men, and men are giants indeed when I am amongst them. 
How can you jest when you still shake with pain? But I'm Falk the Jester, don't you know? Court Jester to God save him, Richard, Cœur de Lyon. What? You're King Richard's own jester? Then, then our king is free? I will never betray my beloved master, so if this is some filthy trick to win my trust. Nay, listen well. I will place my life in your hands to show my good faith. I am no monk. I am Robin Hood. Oh, uh, sorry, should that mean something? Only that I'm the most hunted outlaw in all England. You have but to whisper my name to these monks and I'm a dead man. Pray pardon me, I've been on the crusades with Blessed Mary protect him, our beloved king for many years. Alas, he's still a prisoner in Europe. But how came you here? My master sent me ahead of him, so I escaped Leopold's ambush, but upon reaching England I fell into Prince John's hands. May he suffocate in awful. He turned me over to these monks, who seem to know you well enough. I swear by the Virgin Mary, I'm not one of them. The prior swears by the Holy Three, yet he tortures me. How would you have me prove myself, folk? Why should you want to? As I love my king, I swear I will not leave here unless I take his devoted servant with me. And I will not leave here without my verses. I beg your pardon. They are written upon a ragged bit of scroll wrapped around a wooden cylinder. The prior, may the devil feed him dung for eternity, has taken them. The prior seeks to decode the secrets of my verses, but he must not, or I will have failed the trust of my king placed in me. Return my scroll to me and I'll never doubt you again. Okay, the scroll. The prior has the scroll, so how do I do this? Let's check out this courtyard. Oh, I can't check out the courtyard. Can I check out the tower? At the top of these stairs, there's a locked door with a small barred window. Through it, I can see a small prison cell with no one inside. No, not the tower. I want to check the rooms. Okay, what about this tower? I see desks and scrolls inside. This is a room set aside for study. Oh, his verses might... Hmm... The prior is here. Oh, can I go into his room, perhaps? It's locked. Uh, the prior asked, uh, asked me to tell him when the prisoner was ready to talk. He is not ready to talk though. In fact, he is very much free. I don't suppose I can um, bind him again, tell the prior he's ready for him or something and then go back and uh, steal the, the verses. No more interest in those wretched ropes. Ah, it hurts! Please don't try to move me yet! Well, let's go up then. It's the only other place we can go. Can I speak with these again? No, there's no one else here. No one else.
Okay, let's go see the prior. Oh, I just saved. That's right. What will I, what will I tell him? Maybe let's check this place out. A scribe's desk. More dank stone walls. He's very distracted. Herein is a most amazing account of the Siege of Jerusalem. Christians, Greeks and Syrians were joined in the assault. Count Raymond, Duke Godfrey, also uh, Robert Count of Normandy and Robert of Flanders were there. They built a siege tower of small pieces of wood, all that was to be had, and bound it with leather thongs. They attacked with catapults and other contraptions and daring soldiers launched stones and arrows from the siege tower. The Saracens within hurled from their slings, torches and flaming brands soaked in oil and fat, and thus many died upon both sides. By noon of the day dedicated to Venus, the walls were breached and taken. Franks and other poured in and pursued the Saracens, so that the enemy were driven to take refuge inside the holy places. Within the Temple of Solomon, 10,000 Saracens were decapitated. Not a soul was spared, neither the women nor children. The squires and poorest soldiers slit the bellies to search for jewels that had been swallowed, then burnt the bodies uh, to thus search in the ashes for coins. After the massacre, the crusaders sacked the homes and took whatever they found there, rich or poor. However, Count Raymond allowed Turk, Turks, Arabs and some 500 dark Ethiopians who had taken refuge in the Temple of David to depart alive after leaving all their money within the citadel. This is written by Geoffrey of Monmouth in his Historia Regum Britannia. This scroll contains a piece of history written by Paulus Orosius in the 5th century. It deals with Vasaurus, king of Egypt in 480 Anno Domini. Vasaurus declared war upon the Scythians and sent an envoy with the terms of submission. This only angered the, Scythian, the Scythians. Thinking Vasaurus both rich and stupid, the Scythians warned him to beware the uncertainties of war. Then, to forestall the attack on them, they marched forth and attacked Vesaurus. They drove Vesaurus out of his own realm, but the Egyptian army forced them to retreat until they were too severely hampered by marches to continue their war. Thereupon, the Scythians instead subdued Asia in war, lasting 15 years. They were only forced to return to their homeland by the demands of their wives, who threatened that if they did not return, the women would have children by men of other tribes. This scroll tells of the Amazons. These were wives whose husbands were killed in war. Deeply affected, they rose up and killed all the men who remained, so that all the women would be equally affected. They then turned and destroyed the enemy who, who, the enemy who had first slain their husbands. They burned off the right, the right breasts of the girl children so that they would not be hampered in shooting the bow. The Amazons had two queens, Marpesia and Lampeto, and they would draw lots to see who would go to war and who would remain to protect their home. The Amazons conquered most of Europe, took many cities in Asia, and founded other cities and became rich with plunder. Such fear did they spread that at last Hercules came with nine warships and assaulted them by surprise and massacred the two sister queens who ruled them, Antiope and Orithia. Penthesilia then became queen and fought heroically in the Trojan War. Thus reads the history of Paulus Orogius of the 5th century. Okay, we're reading some scrolls. Not sure what uh, what will come of this. Do we need this information? Maybe. Anyways, it's time to end the episode here. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed some more conquests of Camelot. And as usual, don't miss the next episode because I won't. I will see you all next time.